What's going on you guys? My name is Zach Hartley and welcome back to the channel. In this video, we are going to talk about how to evaluate and compare two different stocks so that you can better choose which one to add to your portfolio and hopefully make some more money in the long run. Here's everything you need to know. Let's go. Okay, so in this video, we're going to look at a couple of different aspects of these companies to hopefully get a holistic view of how these companies are doing and which one is in a better position or a better fit for our portfolio at least. Now, the first aspect we're going to talk about is the business model, but like always, I'm going to talk about it for like one minute, minute and a half here. You need to dive deeper and you need to do a little bit more research than what we talk about in this video. Now, the two companies that we're going to look at today are two software companies that are very, very exciting. They're two big name growth software tech companies. The first one here is Palantir and the second one is called Snowflake. Palantir describes himself as a software for governments and corporations to integrate their data, decisions, and operations. Basically, Palantir takes a company's data, all of their data, as much data as they can possibly get, and they put it into their software, and they try to give the operator better tools and better information so that they can make better decisions and improve their operations. Snowflake is kind of similar to that. They enable every organization to mobilize their data with Snowflake's data cloud. So I think the, the kind of big difference here is that Snowflake is focused on giving the operator and the user access to their data anywhere they are 24 seven, so that it's more mobile and it's more user friendly and it's easier to get access to it. Whereas Palantir is more interested in using that data to change your business and improve your operations. Now, when it comes to the income statement, this is gonna be the first kind of financial piece that we look at. And the income statement is super important because it breaks down the revenue that the company is bringing in or the sales that they're making, how much it costs to make those sales, how much it costs to run the company, and then the amount of profit that is left over. And the income statement covers a period of time. So here you can see it's broken down into different quarters. So each row here represents a three month period of how the company did. In the last quarter here, Palantir brought in $473 million worth of revenue. Prior to that, it was 446, 432, 392, and then 375. So we have fairly steady revenue growth here, which is extremely nice. In the last quarter, it cost 102 million for that revenue. So that's kind of the cost of goods sold here, what it costs to produce that revenue. And then we're left with $370 million in gross profit that is left over for the company to operate and for shareholders. Unfortunately, though, in this scenario, our operating expenses of management salaries and office buildings and stuff like that came to $412 million. And so the company lost $41 million in that quarter. Prior to that, it was 39 and 58 and 91 and 146. So this number is actually getting smaller, which is nice to see because it means Palantir is getting closer to being profitable. That's very, very good. Now, as we scroll down here, we can see that the net income is negative. So overall, this company is losing money and both of these companies are actually gonna be losing money because they're growing very fast. They're very new companies and they're not yet profitable because they're putting all of that money back into research and development, back into sales and back into trying to improve that product. And so neither company is profitable right now. So something definitely to keep in mind, but you can see that right away here by looking at the net income statement and they have a loss when it comes to net income and earnings. And so because the operating income was a loss, then they had other things here like taxes and stuff like that. Everything was a loss for this company, but the revenue is growing very nicely. The gross profit here is also growing 370 million to 351 to 345 to 305. So the gross profit is increasing, which means if the operating expenses can stay fairly steady here, we should be able to see a profit in the next few years when it comes to Palantir. Now, when we look at Snowflake, it's actually very, very positive because sort of the same thing. We're generating good revenue. It's growing steadily and it's actually growing much faster than Palantir. So if we go back just four quarters here, Snowflake was bringing in $334 million in revenue. Palantir was bringing in 392. So Palantir was way ahead of them. And now Snowflake is actually way ahead of Palantir at 497 million compared to 473. So Snowflake revenue was far behind Palantir a year ago, and now they're in front of Palantir with regards to total sales revenue that the company is bringing in. So Snowflake is growing much, much faster than Palantir. Now that is always good to see, but the real key here is the gross profit. And as you can see, the gross profit is actually increasing pretty dramatically by about $50 million in the last quarter, 
which is very nice to see. The operating expenses, however, though, are also increasing fairly dramatically from 463 to 531, almost a $70 million increase in operating expenses. That's what we don't want to see. We want to see gross profit increasing at a faster rate than the operating expenses, because as long as it continues in that direction, the company will be profitable at some point. But if the operating expenses increase faster than the gross profit, that means the company is going to always operate at a loss, which is currently what is happening. You can see in the last quarter, the company lost just slightly more than the quarter before, actually a fair amount more, almost again, $50 million more. So not a good sign here with regards to the operations behind the company. However, the revenue is increasing dramatically, which is very nice to see. And that is usually the hardest thing to do. So as long as that revenue can continue to increase and they can put a control on some of these operating expenses, Snowflake should also be profitable in the foreseeable future. Now, the next point that we wanna look at here is the balance sheet. This is kind of the second major financial statement that you're gonna to wanna to evaluate with every company that you look at. And the balance sheet is a little bit different than the income statement. It is not a duration. I mean, it is not like a period of time. The balance sheet is like taking a photo of the company and it is a snapshot of exactly where the company is at today. What I mean by that is on the balance sheet, you're gonna have assets, you're gonna have liabilities, and you're gonna have stockholders equity. Assets is what the company owns, liabilities is what the company owes to other people, and the shareholders equity is how the company has done so far. You can see that the company has a 5.7 billion dollar deficit right now, that's because they've lost money so far. However, when they start to generate a profit, this number will then begin to decrease. Now, when we look at the assets here, this is what the company owns, and the total assets is 3.282 billion dollars. The total liabilities here is $933 million, which is really, really good to see. It means that the company has much more assets than liabilities. And you'll also notice that the assets is broken into current assets here and then longer term assets. In other words, not current assets. That definition and that breakup is defined by the next 12 months. So if you have an asset here that you can liquidate or you can sell in the next 12 months, that means that it is a current asset, but if it is something that is difficult to sell in the next 12 months, that would be a long-term asset. Same thing with the liabilities. If you owe money in the next 12 months, that is a current liability. You can see that title right here. And if it is not, then it would be a long-term liability. Now, when we take a quick look at Palantir here, they have $2.9 billion in current assets. They only have $665 million in total liability, so they're doing extremely well. $2.3 billion in cash. So that is a ton of cash in the bank and they have $253 million of deferred revenue. This is listed as a liability here. You can see 219 of it here and a little bit more down here. This is listed as a liability, but it's basically customer deposits for revenue. So realistically, it's listed as something that's bad, but it's just kind of a show of confidence from the companies and it's somebody else's money, but the company as in Palantir is holding it right now for services that just haven't been rendered yet. Kind of like if you pay for a year long subscription, but you're on month one, they're gonna hold 11 months of your money and it gets documented as a liability. So that's what this is right here. Overall, it's a fairly healthy balance sheet, no major concerns. They have lots of cash in the bank, which is very nice to see. Now, when we look at Snowflake balance sheet, it's a little bit different story here. They have $4.5 billion of current assets, but they don't have nearly as much cash. They have lots of short-term investments. They only have $1.4 billion of current liabilities, so it is higher liabilities, but it isn't anything to be worried about since they have so many assets. You wanna see at least one to two times as many assets as you have liabilities at a bare minimum, and this company has $4.5 billion of total assets, $1.4 billion of current liabilities. So they're at like a 3X multiple, which is very nice to see. They only have 900 million in cash, but they could sell these securities at any point. So nothing to be too concerned about there. And what's really nice about this one is they actually have $1.15 billion in deferred revenue. You can see the current portion of it right here at $1.14 billion and then another $8 million right here. That is very nice because it means that customers are paying up front they know they're gonna use this services and it's kind of like having a backlog of customers that have like prepaid for their services. It's like the greatest thing in the world. So that's very nice to see and it's a great show of confidence. Now, once you've gone through the financial statements and you kind of understand how the companies are operating and what the financials look like, 
it's time to start comparing them. So for instance, in this column right here, I have Palantir and a couple of their key ratios and metrics. And then I have Snowflake on the right here. I have also highlighted the metric in green for whatever company I think has the best number here. Now, when it comes to market cap, this is just what's the total number of shares outstanding times the price of the shares gives you kind of the value of the company. Palantir is about a quarter of the size of Snowflake when it comes to market cap. So that's just, it's not like one's good or bad or one's better. They're just different size companies. But like I said, they do kind of the same thing with regards to generating and offering these softwares. Now, one metric that is super important for these kind of companies because they don't have any profits right now. These companies are losing money, but they do have revenue. So I always like to do a price to sales ratio, which compares what am I paying for this company versus what are they bringing in in revenue? And when it comes to Palantir, it's 9.34 times. So you're paying 9.3 times as much for the company as they have brought in in revenue in the trailing 12 months. Snowflake is at 36.9 times as much. So Snowflake is much more expensive than Palantir relative to the top line revenue that the companies are bringing in. Palantir is a cheaper, better deal is what I'm showing with this ratio. Now, when it comes to gross profit as a percentage, Palantir also generated a higher gross profit in the last quarter compared to Snowflake. This number can be manipulated a little bit with regards to gross profit. So for instance, if you put your sales guys time and expenses into the cost of the sale or you put it into operating expenses that would dictate whether or not you have a higher or lower gross profit so this number can be manipulated a little bit it doesn't really matter all that much if they are off by a little bit maybe five to ten percent but if one of these companies was making eighty percent margin and one was making fifty percent you would really want to dive in and try and understand why so as of right now palantir has kind of won the first two categories they're selling at a at a lower valuation, which is better for us because it means we're getting more sales for the amount of stock that we're buying. And they have a higher gross profit margin, probably a little smaller factor there though. Now the one thing where Snowflake is just absolutely dominating Palantir though, is in the revenue growth. And that is probably why they have a higher price to sales figure. It's because you're gonna pay for growth in the stock market. If your company is growing fast, you're gonna pay a higher price for it. And Snowflake is growing fast. In the last seven quarters, the company revenue is up 211% compared to 63% with Palantir, which isn't very impressive. And in the last four quarters, the revenue is up 82% compared to Palantir's only 26%, which again is extremely, extremely impressive for Snowflake. They're growing much faster than, than Palantir, which is why you probably have to pay more for the stock, so that makes sense. Now, when it comes to the balance sheet here, like we saw, the current ratio here compares current assets to current liabilities. Basically, this doesn't mean like a higher number here means that you have a safer stock. Basically, what you're trying to do is just make sure that there's no concerns here with this ratio. That's all we're trying to do because if the number is between, is below 1.5, that's a bit of a concern. That means that they have 1.5 million in assets and they have $1 million in liabilities and only a $500,000 difference there. That would be kind of a concern if it was that close. But both of these companies have four times as many assets as liabilities and three times as many assets as liabilities. So that both of these companies are very, very healthy. Yes, Palantir is a little bit higher, which means it's more healthy. They have more assets compared to liabilities but you don't want it to be too high because then it means that you're not using all of those assets to their absolute best use and trying to get the most value out of them. They're just sitting on your balance sheet. And so you kind of got to be careful with this. Um, basically what you're looking with the current ratio is to just make sure this number isn't below one or 1 1.5. Anything above that usually means the company's doing pretty well. Now, when it comes to shares increasing here, this is basically how many new shares have been issued in the trailing 12 months for this company. And when it comes to Palantir, this is their big knock. This is one of their big problems here is that they're paying their staff and they're paying their employees and they're paying a lot of people in shares, which means new shares are being issued, which means the shares that you and I are buying are gonna be less valuable over time. And right now it's at a rate of 8.46%. So they have issued 8.46% more shares over the last 12 months than they had at the beginning of that 12 months. Snowflake is still kind of bad, not as bad as Palantir, but they're at 6.93% more shares in the last 12 months which again is not great. It is better than Palantir though, so I've highlighted it green. Now price to free cash flow, this is also an interesting one and it can be slightly, slightly manipulated depending on how much these companies dis decide to spend on the capital expenditures, but Palantir is trading at a slightly better price to free cash flow ratio compared to Snowflake. 
Not a huge one here, especially for these kind of two young growth companies. But overall, as you can see, kind of mixed results here. It sort of depends. Are you looking for a deal because then Palantir might be the better option? Or are you looking for growth because then Snowflake might be a better option? They both have very healthy balance sheets, but they are increasing their shares at seven and eight and a half percent. So as you can see, a bit of a, a bit of a mixed match here. You kind of got to take all of the data together as a whole. Now, when it comes to the stock charts here, this is where you need to pull in your technical analysis and kind of your short term analysis and look at what is happening on the chart. Palantir rose all the way up to like 30 or $40 before crashing down to $6 and 44 cents. It then traded in a very tight channel right here, all the way up to around almost $12. And now it has broken out of that channel. We are trading in a bearish direction, especially after this last quarter's financial reports. And now it looks like we may have some support here around $7.60, $7.50. And then again, hopefully some support at $6.50. So for me personally, I'm looking for the stock to come down, find support along one of these levels here, trade sideways for a couple of days, and then possibly hopefully find some support and start bouncing up back higher with the market. But as of right now, everything's selling off. The financials don't look great. The, the growth is slowing down. Palantir's paying a lot of money in stock. There's a couple of headwinds for this stock right now. Now, when it comes to the Snowflake chart, it is definitely a little bit more positive. However, we're still down by 50% from the highs at 405 here. We traded all the way down to $110. We then finally broke out of this trend right here. We broke through our moving averages. We've established three higher lows right here. We have increased volume and after the last financials came out, the stock actually gapped up. But now after two or three days of trading, it looks like we're pretty much where we gapped up, maybe like a dollar or two below that. It's kind of traded sideways for the last two to three days after that gap up. However, it's positive. It was a good quarterly report. It was a gap up. We're in a bullish trend right now. It looks fairly good for Snowflake. At least it looks a whole heck of a lot better than Palantir. Okay, so here are my final thoughts. Number one, Palantir growth is slowing down and that is a major concern. If they cannot grow at a faster rate than their operating expenses, the company will continue to lose money. So I wanna see that turn around. Okay, now here are my final thoughts. So number one, when it comes to Palantir, their growth is slowing down, especially on that top line revenue. And that is a major concern of mine. The company isn't even profitable yet and that top line revenue is already slowing down and not meeting the guidelines and expectations that the company gave out last year. So that is a concern that I have. Secondly, when it comes to Snowflake, the growth continues to accelerate, which is very nice to see. That is exactly what we want, especially when they're not profitable, but basically all the time, that's what we want. And then it's extremely expensive though. Even with that growth, it's very nice growth, but the company is trading at 36 times their sales with absolutely no profits to show right now. So it's gonna be a long time before any shareholders really get their money back. It's probably gonna be a couple of quarters still before they're profitable, but it does look like, in my opinion, Snowflake will probably be more profitable than Palantir in the long run if this growth continues. And so I do like Snowflake over the long run, probably compared to Palantir, but damn, it is, it is still expensive right now at 36 times. So here's my strategy. Number one, I'm not gonna be buying Palantir anytime soon. I wanna see that revenue number start to turn around and I wanna see the growth reaccelerate. But I would consider a short-term trade in Snowflake, especially if we see strong support and a bounce off of that level where we gapped up. So we gapped up, we opened right here, we traded sideways a little bit. If we see strong support step here and then a bullish move, that would be my entry point. As long as we have a good risk to reward ratio, I would set a stop loss right below that gap up. Now, if that sounded complicated to you at all, or if you're interested in learning a little bit more about how to analyze the charts and research companies like this, definitely check out my completely free course on Skillshare. The course is called Stock Market Fundamentals and it's hosted on Skillshare where you can find over 10 hours of content with me walking you through step by step everything you need to know about how to understand the financials, perform technical analysis, and execute the trade. So if you're interested in checking it out, use the link in the description to this video. Again, it's completely free. You get a one month free trial on Skillshare. So you can take any course you want. You can try out my course, cancel the subscription before the month is over, and you won't pay a single penny. I promise you, it'll be the best free resource that you can find online. There's over 400 reviews. There's over 14,000 students that have already taken the course, and there's over 2 million minutes of watch time. So please check it out, and thank you so much for watching till the end of this video. I sincerely appreciate it, and we'll see you in the next one. Good luck trading, good luck investing, and we'll talk to you soon.